Uh, our last speaker for the morning uh, session is uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Hassan Al Kaabi. His, his paper uh, is entitled A Pragma Stylistic Study of Imam Ali's Commandment for His Son, Imam Al Hassan. Al Kaabi is an assistant professor uh, from the University of Kufa, College of Arts, Department of Translation. His major is uh, general linguistics, specialized in pragmatics. Uh, he has published more than uh, 25 papers in different uh, local and national uh, journals, uh, authorized and co-authorized five books on various topics in linguistics. Uh, he also supervised and examined more than 30 uh, MA and PhD uh, students. So, Dr. Hassan, the floor is yours. Assalamu alaikum. I am so happy today to be here in this uh, honorable session among us, the group of sublime researchers, my dear professors, Dr. Farid, Dr. Yal, Dr. Abbas, and the other colleagues. Today I'm gonna tackle some kind of topic which is not very new, it's an old new one. Just trying to handle this, because without it I can move, oh okay, I found it. Okay, okay. the topic is a pragma stylistic study of Imam Ali's, peace be upon him, commandment to his son, Imam al-Hassan. Uh, the topic, uh, as the title says, or as the title illustrates, is about, you know, the pragma stylistic approach of studying this important or a highly elevated masterpiece of commandment, which is delivered by Imam Ali, alayhi salam, to his sons and companions. Uh, the importance of this approach is that uh, it tries to fill the gap, which is not, you know, bridged by other researchers in this regard. Most of the researches that have been done so far are done in terms of, you know, literary studies rather than, you know, pragmatics or linguistics in general and pragmatics and stylistics in particular. So here I try to, you know, to shed light on the eloquent masterpieces that have been, you know, paid sublime praise and vast attention from other scholars, but from this perspective. Uh, concerning the perspective itself, uh, it tries, as I said, it tries to, you know, to shed light from, you know, a pragma stylistic perspective on the excellent instances or pieces of ingenuity which is delivered by Imam Ali. I mean the commandment which is delivered to his son, Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam, and which is considered as one of the highly praised works of classical Arabian and Islamic sublime literature. Uh, here again, I focused on the pragmatic and the stylistic components of the, you know, the, of, uh, out of which the, this holy piece, which echoes the Holy Quran, is composed of. Uh, may, mainly, I focused on the pragma stylistic strategies which are employed in performing such, you know, such a highly elevated piece of, okay, commandment. The theoretical framework, I'll try to be as quick as possible. Uh, as I said, we have pragma stylistics. Of course, we know pragmatics. There is no need to say so many things about pragmatics. But in, in terms of pragmatics in relation to literature, here comes the role of stylistics. That's why we have this hybrid. Someone would ask simply, why this hybrid or this some kind of combination between you know, pragmatics and stylistics? Uh, the question is answered in this. Literary pragmatics, or the pragmatics which is concerned with literature, tries to approach literary text in their use of communicative interaction. So it concentrates on the linguistic role played by the, the text and according with the stylistic matters, contextualized stylistics, in fact. 
Okay. Uh, as Daskal says, uh, the utilization of pragmatics investigation in literary classical discourse is indispensable. Okay. Also concerning stylistics, stylistics tries to make some kind of interpretation or uncovering of the aims of the literary works. Again, that's why I have combined pragmatics and stylistics. So we come to the definition of the pragma stylistics. It is the application of theories and methodologies of pragmatics to the study of the concept of style and language. And this is the basic importance. So one would ask, again, what is the importance of applying this approach to this kind of commandment? In fact, this tries to, you know, to configure the importance and the resemblance between the Imam Ali's commandments and the Holy Quranic verses. Okay, so in the end, in the end, I will give you some conclusions that would resemble or that would try to compare Imam Ali's sayings and, okay, uh, tr uh, the traditions which is narrated by Imam Ali to Imam Hassan in a way that is echoing the Holy Quran. Of course, the major aim of this study, I won't uh, mention all, the whole aims, only the major aims is the identifying the most significant pragma stylistic strategies utilized by Imam Ali here in delivering this renowned text and showing these strategies, how have been used in this, in relation to rhetoric. In terms of the aims, the hypothesis, the main hypothesis is that it represents a rich resource for linguistic and other types of scientific studies due to the Quranic knowledge. And this is the basic I said. Uh, I have found through researching uh, the commandment and analyzing it by means of the model, the model of the analysis. Uh, the model of analysis is some kind of eclectic one. It is, uh, you know, a combination of major two other models, Niazi and Gotham's 2010 and Al-Hindawan and Cruz model 2012. Uh, these two models, uh, you know, combine the major tools of analysis, including the following. Okay, this is the model. The model is, has, or uh, it contains at least three basic, okay, three basic parts or three basic stages. First, the initiation. In the initiation, we have the speech art, the conversational literature, diaxis, synonymy, and parallelism. When we move, when Imam Ali moves with the text, uh, maintaining the, the, the ideas which are mentioned or which are referred to in the text comes through pragma rhetorical tropes. Of course, pragma rhetorical tropes are so important and they play a major role in, you know, in, you know, maintaining and alleviating the whole text. And really, I have found that the most interesting part is that the, the use of the pragma rhetorical tropes, I mean the emphatic tropes, rhetorical questions, understatement, overstatement, and the other you know, means are highly echoing the Quranic verses. You see, when it comes to Quranic verse, it highly echoes the Quranic verse. Then we have the structural cohesive devices and synonymy. Finally, the termination or the ending of this stage or this commandment ends with again so we begin with the speech acts and we end with the same thing which with the speech acts and also with synonyms uh, interestingly al imam ali's uh, commandment is you know swarms with uh, synonyms so many kinds of synonyms near synonyms highly elevated ones uh, uh, besides the synonyms i have also found or the study has has reached the conclusion that, that the, not only the synonyms, it is the collocation within the synonyms itself. When synonyms are used, it, they are used in a collocation of range or within the collocation, collocation range. Uh, I have this piece of analysis. Can you, sorry to interrupt Dr. Hassan, just one example and then you move to your conclusion? Uh, yes, I would move to the conclusion. Uh, only this example, okay. uh, we begin with I'm sorry to say this, uh, the translation is missed here. I have the translation, okay. Uh, concerning the conclusions, okay. On, on the basis of the analysis and what I have done through the analysis, 
we, we have reached or it has been concluded that directive and assertive speech act strategies are the most common pragmatic strategies which are highly used with high density. And this is why, they are of course, they are intermixed with lexical cohesive devices intentionally. This is done to consolidate the text and give it precision and highly intricate structure, okay? Of course, this reflects the elevated style and creativity of Imam Ali's, peace be upon him, uh, which is beyond the human, according to Abu -Hadid, uh, Ibn Abi al-Hadid, he says this is beyond the human beings, and, okay, and uh, underneath the, the Quranic verse, okay? So, uh, the creativity here in mixing these stylistic and pragmatic devices in order to give one piece, one solid piece, to create some kind of creative ideas and meanings, okay? Of course, to deeply affect the addressee and the reader. Also, there is a very interesting uh, okay, conclusion, is that the precision and the discor discursal macro and micro unity results from another sig significant linguistic tool, that is the stylistic devices. So the stylistic devices, the repetition, the synonyms, are all used just to show us one thing, which is, again, the influence of the Holy Quran on the Imam Ali's peace be upon him. In the end, I thank you for your listening, and I hope you all the best. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassan, for uh, this uh, uh, presentation.